Good evening. So tonight I'm going to show you and give you another reason why you should use map, so the function from the per package, instead of writing a loop. So last week I showed you uh, that you could use the map function instead of writing a loop in R, which makes your code much more easier to understand and uh, debug. Showed you um, why it is useful in which situations. So it's um, I repeat, to if you want to apply a function to a list of elements. So on each of these elements you want to apply a function. This function can be uh, as complex as you want and the elements contained in your list can be whatever you want. So they can be data sets, they can be uh, models that were already fitted, they can be PDFs, they can be images, really whatever you need. So. What I'm going to show you now is another reason why you should consider using map instead of writing a loop. First of all, let me show you the, uh, you know, the basic situation we're in. So we have these uh, numbers, this list, this list of numbers, and uh, I want to take the square root of each of the elements of this. Of course, this is a, it's not a super example because square root is actually a vectorized function, so you could write square root numbers and you would get the square root of the numbers. But let me write a loop just to illustrate. So I have also uh, an empty uh, vector called results, which will hold the results of my loop. And now I write my loop and I look at results and no problem, I get my results back. Okay, so I have uh, the square root of each numbers. Now, if I use map, um, actually I have map DBL here, uh, I get this exactly same result. If I use map, which is the basic function, I get a list uh, as an output. There's other variants. I could use, for example, map character. In this case, I get characters back. So there's some situations where this can be quite useful. Now, that's the perfect situation, but it can happen very often that for some reason, for example, instead of having a number, you have a character. Here, of course, of course, it's a small list, so you would see it immediately, but there are many situations where this is not so obvious. So, for example, recently I had to scrape data off from some PDFs, and some of the PDFs were... Uh, so, each PDF had a table, so it was relatively easy to get the table out. Um, it was text that you could select. But for four PDFs, we had actually, um, it was a scanned image of the table. So uh, the function that I wrote, which was expecting uh, uh, that the PDF and the text embedded in it, was not working on those PDFs. So, which means that my, my uh, loop, well, I didn't use a loop, but um, my, my, my code, which was using map to map over all the PDFs, failed. And um, I should have known better because the trick I'm going to show you is a trick that I've been using for years now, um, but it could have avoided this situation. So in this case, um, if, if I use, so let's, let's show you again results. So now results is empty again, right? Um, if I write my, if I run my loop, what I get is that for the first two results, I do get the result. But then, because it fails at step 3, I don't get the results for step 4 and step 5, which is a problem, because um, if, again, this is a very time-consuming loop or time-consuming operation, I, if this mistake happens after 5 hours, I might lose everything that uh, was done until then. There is a very simple solution in with per you can use there is a, a function called try catch i think in base r that allows you to deal with these situations but it's not really it's not super easy to use it's not very intuitive very simple so the the uh, and of course let me just show you if i use map whether it's map uh, character or map or whatever i get uh, a pro i get an error message so i just can't do it however per comes with a very nice function called possibly. So possibly, let me create a new function called possibly square root, which is just the application of possibly to the function square root. All right, so possibly is a function from per, which takes another function as an input. And what this does 
it creates a new function which basically works exactly the same way as the original function, so in this case square root, but when it fails it does something else. And in this case we will say, well, otherwise, if you fail, right, otherwise do uh, or return NA, for example. So this creates a new function called possibly square root, which again works the exact same way as square root, but when it fails, it just returns an NA. And you might think, so well, isn't that what uh, square root already does, right? If you do square root of a character, you get an A. True, but, but you will see now the very important difference. If I run squ possibly square root instead of square root, what happens is that I do get an NA for uh, the character tree, but I still get what matters for 4 and 5. And this is huge. This is this is one of the best functions that is included in per, in my opinion. Um, you could argue that map already exists in base R, which would be Laply. Um, there's some other variants. There's supply, S apply, L apply, T apply, etc. So you could use that, but I don't think that in base R you have something as simple and as useful uh, for error handling than possibly. There is also another that I use less, which is called safely. Uh, safely it works in a similar way, um, but you will see the difference. Uh, I think that's it. You don't need any other. Um, the difference is that it gives you two things. Uh, it might be useful. F I, I rarely use it. But what it gives you, it gives you a, m a much more complex object. Now the first element is actually a list with the result and with the error. In this case, null. Uh, for two, again, we have the square root of two. And for the result, for the error, we have null. However, for three, for three, now we have null as the result, but as we have the error message. So this can still, I mean, this is very useful as well. I don't use it so much um, in my in my use cases because I'm not so interested into the error message usually. I just want to know if it worked or not, and if it didn't, I will deep dive a little bit. But in general, in general, I know uh, why it didn't work, so I I write another function to deal with this um, with these corner cases, but. If, if you really have no idea, it could be very useful to save these, um, these error messages as well. As you see, it's a, uh, an object that is a bit more complex because it's a list of lists. So um, it's a list of five lists. So this is a list, this is a list, and so on and so on. But it's very useful. And I, I, think, I think there's another one, um, but I honestly don't remember. As you see, there's... A, many functions. Uh, some of them I, I very rarely use. Uh, oh, I will show you another trick with exec. Yeah, this reminds me. I will show you another very nice trick with exec. I think it's probably another one of the best tricks that you can do but, uh, with, with per. But first of all, let me just see. I think there's safely, there's possibly, and I think there's another. Um, but maybe, maybe, oh, there's quietly, yeah, there's, there, it's quietly, if I remember. I don't know, I don't remember what it does exactly, so let's see, so quietly, um, it's quietly square root, so let's go with quietly square roots, okay, and let's see, uh, quietly square root. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. So this one, I, I I don't think I've ever used it. I it's in the same family. If you look at the um, the help file of any of those, so they they all all three of them would be explained. I I don't remember what quietly does honestly. So it I leave it to you as an exercise. Um, how long have I been recording? So do I show you? It's been almost 10 minutes. So very quickly, I'll show you the trick with exec. So it has nothing directly to do with what we have here, but exec is really nice because... So let's go back to, to basics. Map. Map maps a function to 
a list, right? To a list of elements. So I told you before that this list can be anything. So it could also it could also be a list of functions. Let's see how that that works. So lists functions. So imagine that I want uh, actually yeah the really uh, air norm and air unif. So those functions. Uh, so the first one gives you random numbers from the uh, normal distribution and uh, the second our unif gives you random numbers from a uniform distribution now imagine i want to uh, apply these functions i want to call these functions and i want to have 10 numbers so 10 random numbers from my normal distribution and 10 random oh, i didn't want to do that okay this this is when what happens when you use vim and you're not uh, concentrated, you can sometimes screw things up. So this is how you would do it uh, manually if you want. So you call the one function and then you call the other. But imagine you have hundreds of functions or, or, or whatever. Imagine you don't want to write so much code. So you could put them into a list and then you could say, well, I watched this YouTube video where this bearded guy told me that I, uh, I could use map on a list of anything. So how do I do that? How would you do? How which? How would you? Which function would you map to list of functions? Well, you would need a function whose goal is actually. You would need a function that takes a function as an input, and that returns the output of that function. And this is what exec is. So exec, which is another per function, does exactly that. However. Here we have to give another argument, which is n, and I will explain to you why. So our norm and our unif takes an argument called n. It's not the only one, but they take an argument called n, which is how many random numbers you want. So whenever you need to specify an um, a using map, whenever you need to specify an arguments to whatever is inside your list, that's how you do it, okay? So now if I run this, uh, oh, list functions, I didn't run that. I execute whatever is inside my list, so I execute our norm and our unif with this argument. And if I take, for example, 100, I get 100 random numbers for uh, oops, I was too fast, um, for first of all the uh, normal distribution and then here the uniform distribution. So it's very, very, very powerful. Imagine that you have here uh, a list of, um, of, uh, of models that you want to train and here you have uh, a data set, for example. Well, this is how you could use it. Uh, for example, uh, or, well, you could use the tidy models framework as well, but, I mean, you could do very, very complex stuff. And what is really nice with this is that once you understand how map works, and uh, once you understand that you can have any function and a list of anything, what matters is that the function here takes as an input the elements of the list. Once you understand that, well, you understood everything, because then you just need to think about, okay, what am I working with? Am I working with data sets? Am I working with models? Am I working with functions? Am I working with PDFs? Let me put that in a list. I don't care. I put that in a list and then you think, well, what do I want to do with those things? You just write your function or you pick a function that is or that already exists in a package and you apply that function to one element. You try it out, you see how it works. If you see it worked well, then you just need to map and that's it. And it works immediately. Again, much easier to debug. If you are not confident that it will work until the end, you can use something like possibly or safely if you want to capture the errors. And, and you just let it run. Much easier, much uh, easier to understand, to debug and to, and to write as well. I think a, a loop sometimes can be complex. If you want to build in uh, error catching into this, well, it's it's not so it's not so easy. So I hope you enjoy it, and uh, yeah, 
Until next time, have a nice weekend.